Games a little bit tricky up top and um, wait till his hands is in a high guard position and go go down low. And I think if you go back to replay, I think that's the one or two. Do you feel like this was kind of a bit of star making performance for you? Because uh, you had the first big moment uh, of the night, really, and I think you got everyone super excited. Yeah, I definitely do. Um, 19 uh, years old. Yeah, it went fourth round knockout on a pay per view card. And that's, that's something amazing. I think people want to know about your hype man from Thursday. <laughs> Can you explain who this man is and how this all came about, please? Okay, his name is Dick Bobby the Boss. <laughs> um, you came from one of my guys uh, that trains out of my gym, influencer fighter named Minicon. And um, first, first I saw him, I didn't know him before, but at first sight, hearing him, as a hype man for a guy at Minicon. Um, he was real annoying to me. Real, real Is he on the payroll yet? No, not yet, but we gotta get there. We gotta get there. I think um, him being a hype man this time, I think everybody enjoyed him, so we gotta put him on the team. One question, the story behind Sweet Terminator, please. The origin there. Originally, my name was uh, Sweets, so when I got with Keisa and Jake Paul, they, Jake Paul tweeted that I was the Terminator. So Kisa told me we had to keep the Terminator in there. So I'm like, can we please just put sweets in here somewhere? So I tried the Terminator sweets, and he was like, absolutely not. <laughs> he said, so I was like, what about the sweet Terminator? He's like, that'll Obviously, as everybody knows, Shadeja is the mandatory challenger for Savannah Marshall. We'll be talking to Sky Sports and Boxer in the coming weeks to make that fight in the UK, hopefully in 2023. And I think that's going to be the next undisputed champion of MVP when that's all said and done. <laughs> Just going with the distance tonight and getting that experience, I know a lot of people thought maybe you'd talk here other early, but uh, how valuable is that going into the championship fight? Very valuable. I'm actually glad I went 10 rounds today. Um, Shouts out to Olivia Curry, she was tough. I said that to her in the second round, like, you are a tough son of a bitch. I kept trying. I mean, if I, I had heard a couple of times, I, I almost just started to push her out the ring. Just get her out of here. She was um, game, and um, I'm glad she took me on 10 rounds. I needed that because I know a lot of people, I, you know, I read a lot, so I, I read a lot of uh, articles that said that, you know, if you get Shadeji Green past the six, you might win the victory. So it's made a martial game. Power puncher in more than 10 on several occasions with um, top 10 fighters. We wanted to make sure that I was suitable enough that if we had the battle for 10 rounds, which, you know, I got to get in there with the first, that um, I was willing to do the task. And I want to shout out Ronnie DeSoto, who was my strength and conditioning training coach, and did a really good job assuring that I was in shape for this fight tonight. I felt good. Donna. I wanted to know, do you have a message? I think you're running for it with three of the four covering bodies. Yes. Do you have a message for Savannah Marshall if she's watching tonight? I'm looking forward to seeing her in the near future. I'm ready to dance. Kevin Garcia with Fight Hype. Uh, this question is for H2O. You know, you had a great fight. Um, you know, you've been progressing uh, slowly but surely. You're in a really tough division. What's in your mind your path going forward? Who are some of the names that you'd like to see yourself in the ring with? Um, definitely the best. Um, I think that's what the majority of fighting goals is to be a world champion. But at the same time, I have to listen to my team and uh, see where we go from here. Yeah, you know, 135, even on the exterior, has got some, some good competition. Andy Cruz just joined the division. We got Keyshawn, uh, you know, in that division. We got Brandon Lee. Any of those names? Somebody you can see yourself in the in the ring with in the near future? Yeah, I definitely see uh, myself with the majority of the guys. I think it will pretty much happen maybe in the next year or two. Um, 
but like I said, uh, it's, it's these guys that pretty much sit, sit over the opponent and I just give it a yes or no. For sure, thank you. I mean, let's remember, he's 19 years old. He's doing amazing things, um, but we're going to progress it the right way to ensure that he's set up for long-term success. For sure, thank you. What was, it, what was it like having the legend and Wolf in the corner? Oh, man, that was, um, that was amazing. Um, just some of the words of advice. And then she actually told me after the fight, like, listen, I don't want nobody out. And um, she was she was getting in, she was digging into me, like, listen, you you don't know how special you are. So I look forward to be working with her in the future, too. Um, we're going to be keeping in touch. Uh, kind of like looking at her, looking at myself a little bit, so she put a little fear in me. <laughs> <laughs> she does that. Yeah. yeah, but it was all motivation. I was really, really pleased with some of the things she said after the fight. And um, I know she means business because um, I never really heard her talk about or talk to other fighters the way she talked to me tonight. So it was an honor. Right. Sweet, do you think if you eventually go, go up and um, see the quote, the shields, is that something you want to do by the end of your career? I know the weight class is a little bit different. Yeah, the weight class is definitely different, but um, the first thing on my agenda is being, you know, the super middleweight undisputed world champion. Um, the world, that's a phenomenal fight. I mean, I think that could be a, 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 a huge fight. We're talking boxing. about Amanda Serrano? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Uh, uh, let's put that on record. You I, said go. I never want to fight Amanda Serrano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is my quote, so they go your answer. Did you, did you learn something from, I'm pretty sure you watched State when Carissa Fossa Bannon, because I said that's, that's your next opponent, more than likely. Oh, no, not necessarily. I mean, Clarissa's show's got a different fight than I do. So um, I watched Amanda's last fight. But Styles make fights. I mean, I, I feel like we're all different. Five bucks for H2O. Yeah. The big name, do you, do you want you to get your name in there? Or are you just like, I'm going to see you when I see you with all those heavy hitters at 135? So you know I'm talking about the Shakurs, the Devons, and all that. You want to get your name in that mix, or does it matter? Just sooner or later, you want to see them before you break them. No, I definitely. Um, I want to get my name out there for sure. I think after this performance, I think it'll be, you know, circling around somewhere. But at the same time, I'm just, I see you when I see you because, I mean, uh, it's on their end as well. And then, you know, they're the top guys of the division. So uh, they could kind of have the shots right now. This question is for both of you. Uh, talk about the crowd tonight. It was an incredible atmosphere. Uh, it was a sold out crowd. And, you know, when you guys went out to the ring, just feeding off that energy, listening to the to the roars of, uh, of the fans, how much did you guys uh, use that as far as uh, you know in the ring? Oh, he's asking me. Yeah. For both of you. Both of you. Oh, what are you saying? I'm sorry. Say it again. Basically, how did it feel to be fighting in front of that big crowd with that energy? Oh, it's it's always a blessing to fight in the crowd and uh, get my myself out there and expose myself to a crowd like that, be, being comfortable. Um, fight under, you know, I think they said 20,000 people in attendance. So um, I think it's kind of destined for me to be in, on a big stage. And I think every time I'm under the lights like that, my performance is uh, high class. Um, I think it was uh, definitely pivotal for me preparing for my next fight, um, you know, especially with the UK base. Um, it was crazy, though. Uh, this was an introduction for me. I probably never fought in front of that many people. I mean, I think I performed in front of that many people when I was playing basketball, but not even nearly that many people. So it was nerve-wracking. Um, but um, after the first punch, I think I adjusted. For this uh, other question for H2O, the legend, the playmaker, Michael Irvin from the Dallas Cowboys uh, saw you in the crowd. Uh, he had an interesting conversation with you. Would you mind uh, sharing a little bit as far as the advice or just you know, the, the, what the conversation was about? Um, for the most part, he's pretty much telling uh, me and my dad, actually, uh, just keep doing what we're doing um, as black folks. Um, it's not too many of us like that, so that's the way he's honestly really telling us. So he was saying he loved to see it and, um, you know, just don't get distracted by anybody else and make sure I just keep doing my job. He does his job and everybody else on my team do their job. Last one for H2O. Uh, just talk about the uh, the Snoop Dogg uh, album cover inspired outfit, man. It was, uh, it was pretty slick. It was pretty yeah, slick. Um, it was definitely a contribute to back home to Long Beach and uh, also to honor, you know, everything you kind of done for me and uh, support um, throughout my fights and um, growing up as an amateur. Um, I even just a, a human being in Long Beach. So I definitely have to, uh, you know, at least one time, you know, show my contribute to him. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody.